Good morning, everyone, especially to our Professor Dr. Reynaldo Castro. Our group will discuss about the product and service design. Now, before that, let me ask you some questions. Is your cell phone or laptop functioning well? Is your internet connection stable? Have you bought the ebook version of the reference you need for your research? All these questions talks about product. What is a product? A product is the item offered for sale. A product can be a service or an item. It can be physical or in virtual or cyber form. With a growing number of established businesses, the competition for providing the products and services also intensifies. Companies are on the move of innovating their products and services to gain competitive advantage. In a book authored by Ulrich and Eppinger, they defined product development as the set of activities beginning with the perception of market opportunity and ending in the production, sale, and delivery of the product. Since we know that a product can be a service or an item, let us further discuss about the product development process for manufactured product and a service product. Let us get to know first the manufactured product development process. This is an example of a generic product development process. The process starts by a phase zero, which is the planning phase. The next is phase one, which involves the concept development. Phase two, the system level design. Phase three, detail design. Phase 4 is the testing and refinement, and the last phase is the production ramp-up. Phase 0. Planning This phase begins with opportunity identification and assessment of technology developments and market objectives. The product planning process takes place before a product development project is formally approved before substantial resources are applied, and before the larger development team is formed. Product planning is an activity that considers the portfolio of projects that an organization might pursue and determines what subset of these projects will be pursued over what time period. Product plans are developed with a company's goals, capabilities, constraints, and competitive environment in mind. Phase 1. Concept Development The needs of the target market are identified. Alternative product concepts are generated and evaluated, and one or more concepts are selected for further development and testing. Concept generation process begins by having the details on the customer's needs and the needed product as specifications, which results in the product concepts. Concept selection involves evaluation of the concepts obtained from the customer's needs and other criteria, comparing strengths and weaknesses of the concepts, and selecting a concept that needs development. Phase 2 System level design. This includes the definition of the product architecture, the composition of the product into subsystems and components, and preliminary design of key components. The output of this phase usually includes a geometric layout of the product, a functional specification of each of the product subsystem, and a preliminary process flow diagram for the final assembly process. Phase 3. Detail Design 
This phase includes the complete specification of the geometry, materials, and tolerances of all the unique parts in the product and the identification of all the standard parts to be purchased from suppliers. In this phase, the final documentation for the detailed design of the product is made. Three critical issues in the product development process are finalized here. These issues include materials selection, the production cost, and the expected performance of the product. Phase 4. Testing and Refinement This phase involves the construction and evaluation of multiple pre-production versions of the product. The prototypes of the products are built during this phase. The early prototypes are tested to determine if the product works in the way it was designed and if it would satisfy the needs of the customers. Later, a more refined prototypes are produced to test the performance and reliability of the product in order to identify necessary engineering changes for the final product. The last phase, phase 5, production ramp up. The product is made using the intended production system. The purpose of ramp up is to train the workforce and to work out any remaining problems in the production process. Products produced during production ramp up are sometimes supplied to preferred customers and are carefully evaluated to identify remaining flaws. The next topic is about service development process. Like the product development process for manufactured products, services also undergo certain process to achieve an innovative service offering. This is an illustration of the service development process adopted from Johnson et al. The design phase. This involves formulation of new services objective and strategy. It also includes idea generation and screening, and concept development and testing. The next phase is the analysis, which includes business analysis and project authorization. Development phase. In this phase, the service designs are developed and tested. Development and testing of process and system design is also done. Moreover, there is a development and testing of marketing program design. Personals are trained to have knowledge and skills required for the service developed. The new or developed service is tested through a pilot term. And then, a test marketing is done to explore the consumer or customer's response to a product or marketing campaign by making it available on a limited basis before a wider release. The last phase of the service development process is the full launch. It includes full-scale launch and a post-launch review. The company must take into consideration the result of the test marketing before the launching of the services to a wider population. Once all are set, the full-scale launch of the services follows. This is where the new developed services are being launched or offered to various clients. After the full launch of services, a post-evaluation of the service offered is done. Like most post-evaluation reports, the post-launch review of the services serves as the communication of the result of the launching. This will help to see how well the service was rendered and what are the needed improvement to better serve the clients. So far, we've only discussed about product and service development processes and their economic impact on the firm. Now we will be discussing about product and service performance measures 
and later customer preferences on product design. And we begin with the question, why miss your performance? Why do we miss your performance? Sir Peter Drucker, perhaps one of the world's most famous management thinkers and consultants once said, and I quote, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Somehow, his statement provides an implicit answer to that question. Measuring something facilitates ease in assessment, in evaluation. Kung masukod na ang usakabotang, mas dali na sa i-evaluate, i-assess. And we have to measure performance because we want to improve. Halos tanan o kitang tanan man siguro gusto ma-improve. Kita gani, we do individual assessment of our performance whether at work or at school. Para ma-monitor na ito ang atong growth as an employee or as a student. In like manner, a business organization considering its complexities should be more assiduous in measuring performance, specifically product and service performance, always in view of its ultimate goal, that is, to increase the value of the firm. One scholar noting the great significance of performance measure, measurement even stated that delivering the firm's product and services in an effective and efficient manner is crucial, crucial to the firm's survival. Nonetheless, statistical data have provided that several performance measures utterly failed na pakyas and the root cause is complexity and this is very understandable with great advancements in information technology nowadays the availability of data is unprecedented in human history karun we are bombarded with numbers with a sea of data to the point of having information overload. Masahay daghan o klase-klase ang raw data ang maabot din sa atong working tables. Nakita sa atong computer monitor pero dili na takabalo kung unsay mayang buhaton para atong mga data. It's partly because our brains did not evolve in ways that allow us to handle data as naturally, logically, and objectively as a computer does. And we come to terms with our own human limitations. Hence, to remedy this, it would be beneficial, firstly, to measure what matters. To measure only those which are truly valued by both customers and stakeholders. Secondly, measure the right things. One author commented that there is no tailored fit for all measure of performance. Possibly nga ang performance measure will be employed sa Osaka firm, Diliha Om sa laing firm. In other words, performance measure is a case-to-case -case basis. It has to be employed in the context of a particular business organization one that fits to its strategic plan. And thirdly, keep it simple. Common sense will tell us that simplicity facilitates order. Kung mas simple, mas hanay, mas mapadali ang trabaho, mas gamay ang gasto. We now examine how real-world business organizations measure product and service performance. In measuring product performance, kasagaran sa mga business organizations, ang ginagamit na is accounting measures or these financial ratios such as net profits, which measures the firm's ability to cover all operating costs, including indirect costs. We also have gross margin or the profits earned on products without considering indirect cost. Then the ROA or the return on asset 
which measures the firm's ability to turn assets into profit. Then uh, the return on equity, the ROE, which is the rate of return on investment by shareholders. And the EPS, or the earning per share, which is an important indicator of the firm's profitability. However, because of a very dynamic business environment today, considering the globalization, consumerism, marketing strategists and scholars suggest that accounting misuse are not adequate to measure product performance for two reasons. First, although accounting misuse are precise and objective, they are short term. Kaya sa galang ang atong paghimo sa accounting annual basis man. But we have to remember that in business, we aim for a longer term. That's why we have a strategic plan. Natural man na nga, basta magtukod ang negosyo, we aim it to last long. Wala man siguro natukod ang negosyo nga, wala nangando yung magdugay ang iyong negosyo. Thus, some scholars pointed out that a comprehensive performance measure must address not only financial but also non-financial indicators. I mean those customer-related measures like product quality and customer satisfaction, which are actually the core of AQM and Six Sigma, which I think will be discussed by succeeding reporters. Now we proceed to measuring service performance. And this is highly relevant, especially that most of us are connected with service-oriented organizations. Yet, service performance is somewhat delicate to measure because unlike products or goods, services are of intangible nature. They are an interaction. In fact, one scholar considered service as an experience, kasi natian. Nonetheless, we can measure service performance from the lens of service quality. And one prominent measure of service performance is serve call. This is a skill developed by Parasuraman et al., and this instrument is used to measure service quality based on five different but correlated dimensions of service, namely tangibility, which pertains to the, to the appearance, the physical appearance of the facilities, equipment, personnel, and communication materials. The other one is reliability. This refers to the ability to perform promised service dependably and accurately and responsiveness or the willingness to help customers and provide prompt service another dimension is assurance this pertains to the knowledge and courtesy of employees and their ability to inspire trust and confidence and empathy which is the purity of attention which the firm provides its customers. Mauna siyang kining pagtagad nga purity of attention, kanang attention ba nga dili lang tumi kay mawai imong ang ngayang buhaton, kundi hindi mo siyang gihimo tungod kay pinasingkasing man siya. Moreover, existing literature confirms the significant impact of quality service to the organization's profitability. A study by Griffin in 1995 noted that when customers perceive good service, which would typically tell 9 to 10 people through informal word-of-mouth communication. Now, this is interesting because Moroni siya kining COVID-19 na virus ba? 
ang pag disseminate because information is pag multiply niya dili siya mathematically kundi exponentially so, mas pas pas siya mo multiply and on the other end customers who receive poor service will typically relate their dissatisfaction to between 15 and 20 others. In fact, Gitomer in 1998 cited that if the service incident is so negative, the negative effects can last years through repeated recollection and recounting of the negative experiences. This is something to think about. Now we go to the last topic. This is customer's preference in product design. One primal consideration when we buy products is their functionality. Magpalit na produkto, atong kita na una, diyan nato silang magamit. Nonetheless, human as we are, we also look for the aesthetic aspect of product. That which stimulates our senses kung anong makinang, kung anong maganda sa paningin natin. But, nowadays, as products become more similar in their functional features, product design attains a certain degree of significance in view of competition. Tungod karoon, kadaghan sa kadaghanas, mga produkto, paparihan man sila, mga gamit. Dito na sila magdaog sa product design. That is why product design has a great bearing when we talk about production and operations management. And two things we have to consider regarding customer pre preferences. First is, customer preferences vary to a great degree. It means that customer preferences are subject subjective. Nagdepende siya sa matag tao. It's because they are influenced by cultures, also by religion, by education, health, and individual taste, among other things. And secondly, customer preferences are dynamic in nature. That is constantly changing. Now, karun kung inaana ang customer preferences, nagkambyo-kambyo siya, nagbago-bago siya, it changes over time. Ang problema karon sa mga marketing strategies is how to capture customer preference. That is why various scholars and business strategists were trying to formulate a model which could capture the dynamic nature of customer preferences and predict future behavior. This gives way to the utilization of the multivariate market chain or the MMC because this model suggests that future depends on the current state or on a desired sequence of precedent events. In a multivariate market chain, I create is a model para atabangan ang mga marketing strategies na makapture ang changing nature sa customer preferences and at least ma-predict nila ang future behavior sa usa ka tao ay kinigun nga model nagkuan mo siya nga ang iyong proposition ba nga ang future nagdepende sa unsay trend karon and I just want to highlight the essence of customer satisfaction after all, customer is the only person whose presence business organizations actually exist. Mawang nang natay natukod ang negosyo itong kaya naay customer. In fact, one also considered customer satisfaction as an asset. It is an asset just like any physical asset that should be monitored and managed. Mawang ganit nang nanikamot ang measure ang product service performance and we try to predict customer preferences 
or because we want customers to be satisfied and when customers are satisfied business becomes profitable and this is validated by existing literature specifically by Gitomer in 1998 who stated that good customer satisfaction has a direct effect a direct effect on the profitability of the firm we hope you learned some ideas on the product development process and its economic impact to the firm and consider the importance of customer preference in the product and service design.